Tiger Drew, honey. Hello. Is that your real name? Uh, my real name is Lindsay James Tiger Drew, honey. And uh, the story behind that is something I've um, told lots of times <laughs> in my life. Both of my parents are called Lindsay, so they called me Lindsay James Drew, honey. But I had a problem in my vocal cords when I was younger, so I was very growly. And they started nicknaming me Tiger. And when I was about six months old, they were like, we should change his name to Tiger. So they changed my middle name by default to Tiger. And that's the name I've used since. And it was not just because I became an actor and decided it was cooler as a stage name. Um, it's just ever since I was like two, uh, well, ever since I was six months old, my first name is in Tiger, even though it's technically my middle name. But it's a cool name. It's, yeah, I, I prefer, Lindsay's a cool name as well, but Tiger is cooler, yeah. More memorable as it well. Is. You'd be surprised how many times people I introduce myself and they think my, and they think I've said Tyler, and then um, and then I'll end up knowing them for a few months and I haven't had the courage to tell them that actually my name's Tiger, um, and at some point they'll realise who I am or something. They'll be like, I've been calling you Tyler for the last six months and you didn't tell me. And I said, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have the heart to. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's not a very funny anecdote, but I gave it to you anyway. But you do look like a Tyler, I guess. <laughs> <in a way. laughs> A lot of family photos here, jeez. Yeah, I know, right? I know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Apart from where I'm picking some magic mushrooms in Midsummer Murders, they're all... And actually, that's when I was in Posh to play, and there's one of me own there. But yeah, everything else is family photos because I've predominantly... Well, the two most famous things I've done have been family sitcoms. So, um, yeah. So I've always been... I've generally been a child in a family. Which is... Um, now I'm an adult. Um, um, you know, there's, there's been a, there's a bit of a transition from going from being cast in as like a child in a family to becoming like say a leading man in a drama or something. Um, but I'm working on it. I'm up for a few little bits at the moment. So hopefully, in the future, there might be less family photos and more photos of just me as a leading man. Things crossed. Cross fingers fingers crossed. Yeah. Is it hard? Is it harder to get work as well, you get older and you've been? I think I wouldn't. I mean, this industry, as an actor, is it's, it's a brutal industry, and it's it's getting more brutal by the day. When um, when I was, you know, first kind of getting into it, you know, you were you would aim for Hollywood, um, and Hollywood's like broken now. So now you sort of aim for uh, Netflix. I was going to say Netflix, um, yeah. But then since COVID, everything's done on self tape, which is good because you don't have to go up to London for your audition anymore. But it means about three thousand actors are getting seen for each role. Um, and also, it's, it's tough in the sense that, um, say you get your first two jobs are outnumbered a cuckoo and you're earning, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds as a teenager, and you think, God, this is bloody easy, you know, it's always going to be like this. Yeah. And then you've got a mortgage, you get a bit older, and then there's a little bit of a dry period, and then you realise, actually, maybe it's not quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. But I still earn 97% of my living doing acting, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and I just hope it can uh, can continue. Have you got any anything coming out soon? Are you in the works with anything? So we've got um, so we've got uh, out outnumbered a Christmas special coming out this Christmas, yeah. um, which I know a lot of people are excited about. So we filmed that in uh, a couple of weeks, um, and then I'm really hoping to get this um, Sky drama, which I've been for a few auditions for, and and. Um, yeah, I can't say much about it, but I'm really, really close to getting it and it just depends whether we can make it work with dates because it just so happens that you don't get much work all year and then you get three jobs at once. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping I can make that work. It'll be a really nice lead in the Sky drama. Um, and then go straight on to Panto um, in Basingstoke to play Prince Vincent in Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, so, guys. Uh, if anyone's near Basingstoke, fancy the Panto, it's a great laugh. And, uh, and I'll do my best to hopefully uh, entertain you, as will the rest of the cast, <laughs> I'm sure. Have you got a favourite, favourite, favourite thing you've ever done? My favourite, favourite thing I've ever done, I mean, the favourite job that I've ever, ever actually done, I mentioned it in the Q&A a little while ago, is, is, is a radio drama that hasn't actually come out yet. To com it's, it was made to commemorate the 50th year anniversary of the Moorgate train disaster. Um, and I play this guy called Jeffrey, who's basically the last guy who's rescued from the train. Um, he was a real person in history, and, uh, and I've, I've got to speak to, to his elderly wife now about the character and stuff. And it's just a really, really emotional piece where 
I'd never found it so easy to like, you know, I just read in the lines and the tears are coming out my eyes, you know. So it's really nice when you get a part where it's so emotional and well written that you haven't even got to try very hard to to do the acting sort of thing. But mainstream parts, um, Outnumber gave me everything that I had really, it started me out. But I would have to say I actually probably enjoy playing Dylan in Cuckoo a little bit more because Dylan used to swear a lot, <laughs> he used to get to kiss girls and and um, it was just a bit more of an exciting kind of job and I thought it was a bit, I, yeah. I think I had most fun playing Dylan but I've got most gratitude for Outnumbered. How old was you when you started acting? Um, I was 10 when I started acting, yeah. What was life like? Was uh, it? It was exciting. I mean at 10 I didn't really understand uh, the value of money, so I wasted a lot of it. Um, also, I developed a sense of arrogance, I think, that it took me a few years to shake. Um, yeah, I didn't appreciate it for what it was, really. I just thought I deserved it and, uh, and it was great fun. Uh, but looking back now, I see I was very, very privileged and lucky and, and, um, and yeah, just blessed to have been a, been a part of it, basically. So I, can't, I think I went off on a tangent and didn't yeah, answer your question. Yeah, don't worry then. about it. Like, what was school like? I've never met a child actor, so I'm just, school, it's just always school, really interesting. I was, I was like. at school, when I was doing that numbered, I was at school about, because I was doing other things as well, from, off the back of that numbered. I was at school about 65% of the time. Um, so literally missed effectively a third of all school during it for a few years. Um, but we always had a tutor on set. It was really cool because I was getting up in the morning to go and film a TV show and I knew my friends were doing double physics or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually having a one-on-one -on -one tutor on set, or one-on-two or one-on-three one -on -three with the other kids, I actually found it a lot easier to learn what my teachers were giving the tutor because I had one really clever teacher sat there explaining it to me rather than 25 people in the class asking stupid questions and, and pissing about and stuff. So, um, so yeah, school was good. I still did well at school actually. Um, and I was very lucky to have headmasters and housemasters that would let me have the time off. Um, and I had, lot, I had lots of friends at school, I really enjoyed my time at school. Again, I didn't appreciate it properly. Yeah. My, my parents sent me to a fantastic private school. Um, and I used to think, God, this is a... They said, God, we've got to go to school on Saturdays. We've got to go to chapel service every day. You know, I thought it was all a bit much. But looking back now, I realised how lucky I was to have been, gone to such a great school. and. Um, it's just part of growing up, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah, we've got part to go through up. all that stuff yeah. to now be like, oh, I wish I had. But then if I hadn't, I wouldn't appreciate it. And exactly, exactly. But yeah, no, I mean, the last sort of 10 years or so, I've just really learned the importance of gratitude and and trying to be a good person and trying to make the, re the next right decision. Whereas in the past, when I was on the telly and everyone was telling me I was great, I was a bit more self-absorbed and that, that stuff. So yeah, that's been about my journey has been about kind of the deflation of my ego, I think, in a, in a lot of ways. Well, you know, you've got to go through it too. <laughs> do you have a favourite oh, favourite actor, like a friend? Favourite do you still keep in contact actor. with anyone? Well, I keep in touch with all the outnumbered lot, yeah. um, especially as we're getting back together, especially the kids. Me and Dan and Ramona meet up a couple of times a year, especially because Ramona's Dan's a very talented theatre actor, so we often go to watch him in the theatre as a trio. Yeah. Bumped into Hugh at the theatre a few times and some events we get invited to together. And funnily enough, Claire Skinner, who plays my mum in Outnumbered, has also played my mum a couple of other times in other projects, mainly cartoons. And in one of them, she was called Sue. She's she Sue, my mum in Outnumbered, and in Scream Street, she's Sue, my mum as well. So that was a bit weird. Do but, you just um, call her mum now? Yeah, I just <laughs> call her mum. <laughs> But um, out of all these, I think uh, it was cool, in a way it was coolest to work with Taylor Lautner. Yeah. Because he is probably the most famous person I've worked with, um, and he was just a really lovely guy, a really really talented, the kind of guy who just does backflips in the middle of the set for no reason. See, um, I can imagine that. The kind of guy who at the rap party when you go well, went bowling at the rap party he scored like 230 or something, which is for someone who's not like an actual bowler is an incredible score. So you're just one of those people who's just great at everything, just good at everything, would beat you at everything. Um, fantastically talented, really nice guy, down to earth. Um, always had time to talk to me. And uh, and and, all, and he used to tell me I was great. You know, I'd do a scene with him, he'd say, you know, that was, you did that brilliantly, man. 
And I'm like, wow, man, you're a Hollywood movie star. Like, <laughs> um, and you're telling me uh, you think I'm really talented. Uh, so yeah, he, uh, I wish him all the success in the world. I really like Taylor and he was a most famous person I worked with, so that was cool. Yeah. Do you have a role that you've, you'd think you'd want to play? I, I think it, it's so um, it's so tough to, to think of like a role that I'd like to I mean, I'd have loved to have been James Bond. I'd have loved to have been <laughs> Spider-Man. I'd love to be Doctor Who. Um, the thing is that, you know, I, I'd love to have been a, in Peaky Blinders. I mean, there's, um, there's so many characters that are yet to uh, exist yeah. as well, you know? Um, but really, I, my dream really would be to be the leading man in a big Netflix drama with a really meaty character, um, a complicated character, not necessarily comedy, gritty, emotional scenes, drug addict, I don't know, just something really meaty, leading man on Netflix. That's the, that's the, that's the dream. You just want to be on Netflix. That's the dream. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, Cuckoo's on Netflix, our number's been on Netflix, but I want a Netflix original. A Netflix original. And, um, or, or I'll take a, I'll take a Disney Plus, I'll take a I'll take an Amazon Plus, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take a, you know, Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus, but that's, that's where actors are aiming these days. Um, that's, that's, that's where we're aiming, and yeah. I mean, it doesn't even need to be the lead. I just want a juicy part in a big show that loads of people are talking about like and stranger not, things not like the next be, stranger things it's not because i want to be like famous yeah. it's nothing to do with that it's just because you know i put you know i've kind of put all my eggs in this acting basket and um and I, my dream is for it to pay off you know and um and uh, i'm modest enough to know that it might not and i'm very lucky in so many other aspects of my life that i won't be bitter if it doesn't I've just got engaged a beautiful woman. My parents are happy and healthy. My dogs are happy and healthy. Got a nice place to live, money in the bank, food in the fridge. So it's all cool. But if I could get that big, big, big role, it'd be a dream come true. It'd It'll be a, happen. It'd be a dream come true. I'm it trying to manifest happen. it, trying to trudge the path to happy destiny. Um, but yeah, it's a brutal industry. It's a brutal industry. You get so close. The last few years, I've got so close just on big parts. And at the last minute, that's the last two or three, it just doesn't go my way. And I've spent hours preparing for it. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Hours fantasizing about how much I'm gonna get paid, what accommodation are they <laughs> gonna put me in? Are the cars gonna fancy me? You know? Um, and then it doesn't happen. So, so now so you, you need to... You gotta pick yourself back up and just keep going. Because that's why, that's why people give up. And I won't give up because, you know, so Ian McKellen, you know, nobody really knew who he was till he was in like his 40s or 50s or something. And that gives me hope, so. You can do it. Yeah. Netflix will have you on there. Come on, you? Netflix. The next Stranger Things. Come like, on, Netflix. I know you're watching. Did you audition for Stranger Things? I didn't. I um, I done some big auditions. Like, uh, I nearly got Harry Styles' part in Dunkirk, but then I found out it was Harry Styles, and I thought, well, I'm not getting that anymore, <laughs> am I? Um, yeah. I mean, I won't list any of the ones I've got near to really, but I've got, I've got, I've got near to some life-changing roles before, and then they haven't quite paid off, but. It lets me know that it's in me and it's possible. And why should I give up on my dream? Do you know what I mean? No one should give up on I'd, their um, dream. I'd rather get to my deathbed and think, well, I gave it a really good go than think I gave up and sat in an office for 40 years. Um, so that's a really long winded answer. Sorry about that. I'm a rambler. But, it's okay. But yeah. You're an actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got to get it out of your system. <laughs> this guy's trauma dumping, guys. <laughs> It's all right. You'll you'll be good. You'll be fine. I'm, I'm and blessed. you keep going. I'm, I'm and you blessed. keep going. I'm blessed. I, I mean, you talk to 99% of actors in the world. They bite your hand off in my career. It's just, you know, I always compare myself. I never compare myself to the waiter or the the blind man in the street. You know, I always compare myself to the actor who got that job that I wanted. You know, when comparison is a thief of joy. And really, if I compare myself to the, the waiter, not the waiter's a, a a bad profession but you know or the, the blind man in the street then I'd realise how lucky I was you know but sometimes it's hard to think like that I always have to pull myself back into that state of gratitude you know um, well, I think because you've done it since you were 10 years old as well you yeah, and you can't just... do, I don't think you can do this unless you've got a massive and really strangely functioning ego yeah um, maybe, maybe maybe people can but I've, I've never really met many actors without a big ego um, 
and I certainly got one, which is why I try and tame it. But, um, but yeah, it's a tough industry, I'm just, and I'm very lucky to have done what I've done. I just hope it continues. I hope I can continue to earn my living doing what I love. Well, it's all right, because in a year's time, when I see you on Netflix, and I'm like, I was sat exactly, talking to that exactly, guy, exactly. and he, you know, it was that talk that changed his life. I told him to keep it. Uh, no, it was. <laughs> hopefully the industry keep picking up, because since COVID, it's been, the arse is full, sorry, the, um, it's gone downhill a little bit um, for everyone. I know loads of talented people out of work. Um, so hopefully with a strong finish to this year, we're going to next year with some momentum, and industry will keep re revitalising, and, um, yeah, it'll pick back up. We'll keep going, you know? It just takes a few we'll years, doesn't it? you got to but have yeah. a dream to follow, a dream to trace, and this is my dream. This is his dream, Netflix. This is his dream. Make it happen. <laughs>